Grace and peace. I am Kimberly Joy and I thank you for tuning into the Kimberly Joy show. And God, I thank you. I thank you for being God. You are the only true God, the only living God. I thank you for your love, for your joy, for your peace. Most importantly, I thank you for your gift of salvation. Lord, I pray for all of us who are your followers, all of us who are your children. Lord, I pray that that we are more united than we've ever been before. I pray, Lord God, that we let go of any hangups, God, any offenses, God, and that we come together as brothers and sisters in Christ, remembering that when it's all said and done, that it's all about you. Lord, I thank you for this message you have given me to share with your people. And I thank you, God, for it blessing and ministering to each of us. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We thank you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I have an announcement. Power and Faith Theatrical Players presents Who Told You? Who Told You focuses on the dream killers who have been working tirelessly against humanity since the beginning of time. They are now being brought to justice for destroying the dreams of countless individuals. The character I play, Prosecutor Janet Justice, will present strong evidence against these demons. Will the evidence be enough to hold up in the court of truth? Written and directed by Sylvia Woods, Who Told You is an inspiring play reminding us that there is no limit to what we can do. The play will be Saturday, July 31st at 5 p.m. Doors open at 4.30 at Power and Faith Ministries, 8120 Hamilton Avenue at the Hilltop Plaza in Mount Healthy. If you would like to see the play in person, just go to paypal.me slash power and faith or cash app, that is dollar sign, power and faith. Or you may call me at 513-417-0097. Now, for those who prefer to see it online, you may go to Eventbrite and search for Who Told You under online events. And we thank you in advance for your support. Now, I have a scenario I want to share with you. It's not a true story, but it is a situation that is similar to situations I've seen throughout my years of being in church. And after I share this story with you, I want you to ask yourself this question. Is this woman overreacting? Here's the story. The woman's name is Minister Janice, and she has been a member of Acts Missionary Baptist Pentecostal Church of God in Christ Temple for the past three years. During her first year, she basically just sat and listened to the word. By her second year, she said she was ready to become more involved. So she joined the choir and the evangelism team. She also became known for being a big giver. That is a big giver of money. In fact, whenever God blessed her financially, she would ask the pastor if she could give her testimony. And at the end of every testimony, she emphasized that everything she did was for the glory of God. She wanted no credit, no recognition. Well, at the start of her third year, the organ broke and it was irreparable. So a fundraiser was created to help raise the money for a brand new organ. Many members gave every week and the necessary amount was slowly but steadily being raised. Well, one Sunday, Minister Janice decided to write a huge check. In fact, it was enough of what the church needed to complete the fundraising goal. When the pastor announced that the church now had the funds to purchase a brand new organ, uh, the church went up in a high praise. The pastor expressed his gratitude first and foremost to God. And then he said, I want to thank each and every one of you for your giving by working together as one. We will now have a brand new organ. Mm. Everyone seemed to be excited about the good news, except for one person, Minister Janice. In fact, once she realized that the pastor wasn't going to give her a special shout out, while service was still going on, she jumped up out of her seat, 
grabbed her purse, stormed out the front door, got in her car, and sped off. Minister Janice was offended. Now, this scenario I just shared with you, again, is not a true story. It's not about a particular person. But I have witnessed situations like this before. I've been in church all my life. And, and I've heard the word offended thrown around quite a bit. To offend means to cause to feel upset, annoyed, or resentful. Or to hurt someone's feelings. Question. Should Minister Janice have been offended by the pastor for not acknowledging her donation? Now, before you answer that question, remember, she's not the only one who gave. Many members gave every week. So, should the pastor have singled her out simply because she gave a large amount? As believers in Christ, we should always consider our motives for the things we do, especially when it pertains to the house of God. Are we doing what we're doing because we want to be a help to the body of Christ and to honor God? Or are we doing it for recognition, huh? for a pat on the back? Matthew 6 verses 3 and 4 say this. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. That your charitable deed may be in secret. And your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. If Minister Janice's motives had been right, she wouldn't have been offended. Instead, she would have been praising God with the rest of the congregation, waiting for God to reward her, not the pastor. Maybe it's just me. But sometimes it seems we are more sensitive in, in our churches than we are anywhere else. And you know what? The enemy is behind all that. Yes, because he wants to keep us divided. Satan knows that if we are all on one accord, then there's nothing he can do to stop us. Getting offended over every little thing is actually selfish behavior when you think about it. See, as believers in Christ, we must realize and remember that it's not about us. No, it's about glorifying God. Huh? It's about exalting the name of Jesus. It's about winning more and more souls for his kingdom. I want to leave you with this. And, and, and I encourage you to really listen and meditate on these scriptures. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 2 and 3 say, Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Verse 3, make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. I want to thank you for listening to today's broadcast. I pray it has been a blessing to you. Now, if you're ready to accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, please pray this prayer. Dear Jesus, I believe you died on the cross for my sins. I believe you were buried. And I believe you rose again so I can be free. Jesus, please forgive me for my sins. Come into my heart and save me, Jesus. Heal me, Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. And I will serve you forever. Thank you, Lord. I am now saved. Now, I encourage you to attend a good Bible-believing church. You are welcome to our church, Power and Faith Ministries with Apostle Ron and Pastor Jerry Banks. We are at 8120 Hamilton Avenue at the Hilltop Plaza in Mount Healthy. Sunday service, 10 a.m. Wednesday Bible study, 7 p.m. To contact me, please email the Kimberly Joy Show at gmail.com or call 513-417-0097. You may follow the Kimberly Joy Show on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. You may donate to the Kimberly Joy Show on Cash App, Venmo, or PayPal. And now, here is Bishop Noel Jones and the City of Refuge with Not About Us. <laughs>